Civil Litigation Department, we have the Department of Public Prosecution, we equally have the, the Department for Legal Drafting, we equally have the Planning uh, Statistics uh, uh, Department, and we equally have the uh, Advisory Services and Judicial Layers in uh, the Ministry. These departments have their own key role to play at the Ministry of Justice. And these are coordinated by the Permanent Secretary and Solicitor General of the state, who is equally in touch with the Attorney General and Commissioner for Justice uh, uh, in the states. Uh, of justice. The Attorney General usually assigns or delegates his responsibilities or powers to officers of the states who are lawyers, and that is to say they are the, they are the law, uh, law officers of the states. And by the delegation of power, when I came into office on the 18th of August 2023, I delegated my powers to about 27 legal officers to prosecute cases on behalf of the Attorney General of the States. And then uh, 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 we, 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 we do vet uh, a lot of laws along the line through the legal, uh, legislative, uh, legal drafting department and prosecute cases through the office through the Directorate of the Public Prosecution. This is just a brief introduction of what the Office of the Attorney General and Ministry of Justice represents in the executive government in the states. 
Now I would like to take us through the, uh, some of the achievements recorded so far by the Ministry of Justice under the able leadership of His Excellency, the Executive Governor of Kenya State, Comrade Dr. Nasir Idris Faron Bwendu. Uh, when we came on board on the 18th of August at the Attorney General and Commissioner of Justice, I personally realized that the Office of the Attorney General and Commissioner of Justice of Kenya State was not habitable because of some obvious reasons at, at, at the ministry then. Then we, the first thing we, we did was to send a memo to His Excellency, the Executive Governor of Kenya State, for his approval for the refurbishing of the Attorney General Chambers. And graciously, His Excellency approved the, the refurbishing and the polishing of the Office of the Attorney General, which was then unsuitable for the uh, official engagements of the Attorney General and Commissioner of Justice of Kenya State. And right uh, presently, the, the office had already been uh, refurbished and punished to, to, for the activities of the Attorney General and Commissioner of Justice of Kenya State. Then immediately after the refurbishing of the Office of the Attorney General and Commissioner of Justice of Kenya State, we equally uh, 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 applied through a memo to His Excellency for further recognition and, uh, and supply of updated research materials for the Ministry of Justice Library. Because when I came on board, we realized that the, the, the library of the Ministry of Justice was, uh, was not, uh, was not uh, uh, fully equipped uh, with regards to the fact that in 2006, the, the Ministry of Justice burnt down, uh, including the law library, which affected the law books, law reports, and other valuable documents uh, got uh, uh, burnt at the Ministry of Justice. So in order to ensure that there is an updated library for the Ministry, the, His Excellency approved the, the purchase of a uh, 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 10-year subscription of Nigeria's Weekly Law Report, who are going to be one of the most reputable law reports in the country. Nigeria's Prefer Quarterly Law Report, then uh, Nigerian criminal cases and numeral books. Numeral books were equipped at the, uh, at the library of the Ministry of Justice uh, in Berlin, Kevin. Then the next uh, activity at the ministry is the purchase of 40 new uh, uh, modern laptops, HP laptops for the law officers at the ministry. When we came on board, we realized the fact that the laptops being used by the State Council at the Ministry of Justice was bought in 2018. And we realized the fact that they are no longer uh, functional to, for effective activities of the law officers at the Ministry of Justice. And then we quickly sent a memo to His Excellency for the purchase of a new laptops for, for the law officers at the Ministry of Justice. And His Excellency graciously approved the purchase of 40 new HP laptops for all the law officers at the Ministry of Justice. So as I speak to you now, the, all the officers in the Ministry of Justice uh, are in receipt of the new HP laptops for their activities. And I can assure you that the, the, the gesture has uh, improved the efficiency of the activities at the Ministry of Justice. Uh, number four. The subscription of law pavilion and law companion applications for the law officers at the Ministry of Justice. Uh, it may interest you to know that uh, uh, lawyers all over the country uh, are, are using sophisticated materials in conducting their research uh, at, their, uh, at their law firms. So we realize that it is equally the uh, Environmental Protection Agency, which equally created the Ministry for Environment. So the Ministry of Environment is the line ministry started with the responsibility of protecting uh, the, 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 our environment. And then the issue of deforestation, uh, deforestation is part of their, their mandate. And KSEPA equally as an agency of the state is uh, started with the responsibility of uh, protecting uh, our environment, ensuring that the, 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 the deforestation does not take, uh, take place within our state. We, we recognize the, the predicament of the KSEPA, and through their law, we are trying to amend the law to ensure that they have more powers, they become more rigorous to, to, to protect uh, our, our environment from uh, degradation. Yes, thank you very much.
Then on the issue of the, the other speaker who asked a question about the, those that benefited from the outfit and wardrobe we'll allowances from the ministry, from the name, it is tagged wardrobe we'll allowances or robe allowances. When you talk about robe allowances, you are talking about the special way of uh, dressing of by lawyers when appearing before the before our courts because it, our profession is a conservative uh, profession which we heavily borrowed from uh, uh, United Kingdom. So we have our own ways of uh, appearing before the courts and that, why, that is why I made mention of the law offices. It is allowances meant specifically for lawyers at the Ministry of Justice. Yes. Then another issue of uh, somebody that talk about the issue of awarding trials and the prosecution of cases in the state. You see the Administration of Criminal Justice Act and equally the Administration of Criminal Justice State Administration of Criminal Justice for 2021 mandated the correctional service to provide the Office of the Attorney General with a compiled list of all the awaiting trial suspects at our correctional services. And I can assure you uh, 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 in January, because it's supposed to be sent on quarterly basis, and the, 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 the correctional services in compliance with the law sent to my office of all the awaiting trial suspects at the, with, their, with their fingerprints, their pictures, who are awaiting trials at our correctional uh, uh, centers in the, in the state. So we do have a lot of individuals who are awaiting trials, which is more than 300 uh, at, at, at the present, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, uh, at, the, at, at our correctional centers. But I want to assure you one thing. With the achievements that I have mentioned, more particularly in terms of capacity building, in terms of provisions of uh, 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 materials for conducting our cases, we, 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 we are doing our best. I can assure you, if you go to my office currently, you will not see nothing less than 20 cases that I've handling them directly at the court and prosecuting them. Because I see no reason why an attorney general of the state will be sitting at the comfort of his office and be receiving this second-hand information. So I, I, I do prosecute myself, gender-based violence cases and high criminal cases. I'm handling more than 20, more than 20 at presently in my capacity as attorney general. So I can assure you all the law officers at the Ministry of Justice are handling a number of cases presently at the court. We have been securing convictions and even even presently one of the I don't want to mention them, one of the one of the uh, pressmen here, I spoke with him recently that I seek uh, for his uh, for his uh, for him to volunteer and appear before the court on the 9th of March for him to interpret the proceedings of the court from English to a particular language because the, the, the suspects and the defendant before the court cannot speak a English language. So he volunteered to be before the court to, to, to interpret the proceedings of the court from English uh, to, to, to that particular language and vice versa for, for the state. So we, we, we are putting in our best to ensure that we do congest the state. The last the, the law mandated the chief judge of the state to, to go on prison visit in collaboration, in conjunction with the Ministry of Justice and other law enforcement agencies. And in the, uh, towards the uh, end of the 2023, the CG1 at the, at the, in August precisely was in the uh, uh, correctional centers. He interviewed some of the inmates and then granted bells to, to others who are within, within the ambit of the law, they, they have their offenses available. And then we, we came back and we sent all the case diaries to the relevant law enforcement agencies and we seek for their support in that particular respect. And I can assure you, because of that visit and then the collaboration of the Ministry of Justice and other law enforcement agencies, we, we retreat more than 100 case diaries. When I say 100 case diaries, I'm not talking about 100 inmates because you can see a particular case diary with 10, 4, 4, 6 uh, uh, number of defendants in it. So we, we, we baited them and we sent it back. That's why I specifically mention of the fact that we have baited more than 200 case diaries from August to January 2020, 2024. It was part of that effort for with uh, the law enforcement agencies, the correctional services, the judiciary that we are able to achieve that within that shortest period of time. So we are doing our best in that, in that aspect. 
And um, uh, another, another speaker talks about the dispensation of justice and the recantation of our cases. It goes along the way in issues that has to do with awaiting trials. Because when you say somebody is awaiting trial, you are saying that he, he has been prepared in correctional service for a period of time and his case has not been presented before the court for him to know his faith. So we have a lot of them and we are doing a lot to make sure that we don't have them. If you go to our, our courts now, you see cases that have been that we have filed from January to this February. Uh, uh, about half of the cases that we, the Ministry of Justice presented in the last in 2023. So we, there is a lot of efficiency and effectiveness in terms of the congestion of our prison and other issues. And we have a lot of uh, support from the judiciary because you once you are done with your cases, the, the, the judges will just give you a date for them to deliver judgment for the inmates to know his uh, position in, 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 in doing that. So we are doing a lot to ensure the condition of our correctional centers in that regard. Then another speaker uh, talks about the issue of crimes and criminality in the societies and the cases that have been around among the lowest. Uh, what indices are we using? Uh, let me just quickly take you back to the length of memory, which I have stated here that uh, one of the laws that was assented by His Excellency, the Executive Governor of Cape State, was the law establishing the Bureau of Statistics. We realized that since the creation of Cape State, we don't have a, a, a Bureau of Statistics. And for you to have an adequate and accurate data, you must have a central body that is collating the data on your behalf. You can rely on central, central uh, data, but for you to have an accurate and central data, you need to have a body that is uh, coordinating the, uh, the, the population of that data from different uh, uh, sectors. So for the issue of crime that you are talking about, you just look at the number of number of suspects that have been apprehended by the law enforcement agencies, and you compare them with the number of uh, 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 suspects that, has, uh, that were uh, that were arraigned before the court of law. They were either convicted or their cases were terminated. So this will equally help you in arriving at the crime rate in a particular society. So, but that particular indices was not done by by Cape State government or officials of Cape State. It was largely done by the, uh, the by 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 by, by non-governmental organisations and, and and international organisations like UNICEF, World Bank, and uh, UNDP and other organisations. But by and large, I can assure you that uh, we are very much comfortable with that particular, what you call it, that particular report. But we are equally not relentant to make sure that we have a state that is free of uh, crimes and criminality, God's uh, will. <laughs>